Just a few weeks ago, we were all ridiculing AMD for releasing a GPU at a terrible price point, but then comes along Nvidia who says, hold my beer. Oh, and GPU prices seem to be on the rise again, so that's just fantastic. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. It seems like every time I want to forget about the GPU market and focus on other areas in the PC hardware space, there's always something that pops up that I get the urge to talk about, and so here we are, just when you thought things were starting to get a bit better, with GPU prices going on the decline since May, that hopefully by the holiday season we would return to a somewhat normal market, things unfortunately just didn't pan out the way we wanted them to. A recent report from 3D Center, who had originally reported back in June that GPU prices were on decline, have shown that now the market is back on an uptrend in terms of GPU pricing. 3D Center monitor data for major German retailers who specialize in PC components. They illustrated in their graphs all the price points the GPUs have hit relative to their MSRPs, and we've seen some pretty ridiculously high figures for sure. Since June, prices had dropped dramatically for most SKUs, though they still hadn't come down to a level where I thought it would be feasible or made sense to buy. Though now it seems like since the beginning of July till late August, prices have been steadily going up. Now, the increase seems to be anywhere from like 2-4% to every week, but prices were pretty bad to begin with, so that any additional increase on top of that just makes everything even less feasible. This has been due to a combination of factors. For starters, China started cracking down on crypto mining operations, and that caused the prices for a lot of various cryptocurrencies, or rather the entire market, to see a steep decline. But since then, it seems like they've also recovered as well. And how that's correlated to GPUs is that when the prices go up, miners generally see it's more profitable for them to continue to mine, whereas before, when the value of Ethereum, for example, was on the decline, many secondhand markets, especially in China, saw a flood of GPUs GPUs at the market. Number two, and take this one with a bit of a uh, grain of salt, the sources on this one are still a bit iffy, but apparently people have found a way to partially bypass or work around NVIDIA's LHR, which is their light hash rate limiter to restore at least 70% of the GPU's mining performance. If you weren't aware, LHR was new silicon NVIDIA introduced for their existing GPU models to deter miners as they weren't efficient for mining due to their poor performance. But if people are finding ways to bypass that and therefore make the cards even 70 or 80% as profitable when compared to the older silicon, they'll most definitely take advantage of it. This doesn't apply to AMD cards and RDNA 2, as it was isn't really efficient for mining as previous gen architectures, still doesn't stop miners from going after them though. In fact, there was a mining site that posted a video just recently showcasing boxes of AMD GPU stacked, which will go towards miners. I don't know how exactly they got the cards, could be directly from the distributor, and I hope it's not directly from the manufacturer, otherwise that's just utter bullshit. Number 3, PC gamers have been waiting patiently for GPU prices to drop, and when we saw that places were starting to carry more stock of GPUs and prices were falling, this then caused people to go out and impulsively start purchasing GPUs again. Not that I was recommending people to buy cards yet, but we're at this point right now where as soon as we see any sort of price drop and there is stock readily available, available, people then desperately start to buy the cards again because they fear that prices might go up or they might see a shortage of stock again and they won't get their chance ever again. So they're at the point now where it's like as soon as they see it in stock, whatever the price tag says, they're just going to hit buy or you know, just check out with it. Along with that, there's also talks of foundries such as TSMC and Samsung raising prices for their own services and future nodes, such as for 5 nanometers and 3 nanometers. This is probably not as applicable right now as it will be in the future. If there were previous contracts which were already negotiated by AMD, Apple, Qualcomm, and whoever else uses their fabs, then that agreement will still stand until all those orders have been fulfilled. But say there's a new silicon or a new SKU, or they're just trying to be putting in extra orders to accommodate for the higher demand, then TFC can say, yeah, we're going to leverage these higher prices and you guys have no choice but to pay for it. And then on top of that, you guys know as well as I do who has to eat up those higher costs, we the consumer. So with all that said, don't be surprised to see prices start to go back up. And if you were hopeful that things would come back down to earth for the holiday season, I temper your expectations. To make matters worse, a lot of people were looking at this and saying, well, forget about buying any sort of high-end GPU. Either I'll bide my time with what I have, or as a stopgap solution, I'll buy a mid-range or entry-level solution. Problem is, is that the whole entire market is relative, so prices for cards like the RTX 3060 Ti or RX 6600 XT have also gone up dramatically. 
Now, Chinese hardware site IT Home have reported on some information which has surfaced from Board Channel's forums, which is a closed forum for people that deal with OEMs and AIBs. Here, they reported that due to some new outbreaks of the virus in China, some manufacturing plants aren't working at full capacity, so they expect to see a reduction in shipments for GPUs like the RTX 3060. So with lower volume and higher demand, this is just another factor involved in increasing prices. Like, it's already bad enough to see 3060s go for 700 Canadian dollars, but the fact that we're talking Talking about prices going even beyond that is just absolutely stupid. And again, this is just going back to one of the previous videos I made where you might as well just focus all your efforts on trying to snag a console from Microsoft or Sony because you can still get those machines at MSRP, it's just hard to get one. Or buy an APU like the 5600G and bide your time with it, play some older titles. So things are definitely pretty bad in the GPU market and only appear to be getting worse. However, that won't stop Nvidia or AMD from releasing new GPUs, which none of you will be able to buy anyways. Copite7Kimi, who is a pretty well-known hardware leaker and data miner, on Twitter last week said that Nvidia could very well be releasing a new RTX 3090 later this year. This would be an RTX 3090 super variant, which will have the full fat GA102 chip and will sport 10,752 CUDA cores, the same 20 one gigabit per second memory and a TGP of 450 watts, which if I'm not mistaken would be about 100 watts more than the vanilla 3090, which has a TDP of 350 watts. While this might seem like a huge increase in power, it's not surprising because my Strix 3090 with the power limits maxed out in MSI Afterburner will happily consume like 480 watts under load. The sad part is, is that despite the enormous power increase, it barely impacted performance, or it didn't really lead to any sort of noticeable gain. Speaking of performance, just looking at the specs of these things, I'm scratching my head and going, why? Like, what's the point of this GPU? It's not like it's going to be faster than the vanilla 3090, aside from synthetics. It'll cost them more to make, will be even more stupidly priced, extremely redundant. But I guess that's kind of the norm for NVIDIA. They've already done that with the 3070 Ti and the 3080 Ti then what's stopping them from doing that again with the 3090? At this point, I just feel like this was an excuse to re-release new GPU SKUs with higher margins to take advantage of the market. I barely even see 3070s and 3080s in stock anymore, but I was at my local can of computers the other day and I saw a shelf full of 3080 Ti's, but nobody was buying them because it was sitting there on the shelf for $1,900 Canadian, almost double of what I paid for my 3080. But for what, a 5-10% to performance increase at best, something you won't even notice? At this point, I'm not even sure what to say. This generation is a complete right off. Whether you're team green or team red, it doesn't matter. The cards are just too expensive. Which is a shame because I remember literally one year ago when we were all getting excited for the RTX 30 series and AMD's RX 6000 series, this would have been the generation that gamers were really looking forward to because prior we had Nvidia's RTX 20 series which were poorly received and just overall disappointing and AMD was absent in the high end. So you had a lot of people sitting on Pascal 10 series cards like 1080s or 1070s, 1060s, RX 480s, Vega 64s, Vega 56, and whatever, maybe even cards older than that like an R9 390 or 970. And they would have all loved to upgrade to something like a 3080 or RX 6700 XT, but the insane pricing has butchered that completely. This has set precedent in my opinion, and it'll be hard to look forward to next gen hardware if all it's going to be is just more of the same, maybe even worse. $700 for mid-range cards or $1600 for high-end cards. PC gaming is just becoming too expensive, I'm sorry to say. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.